those uh, edibles. Yes, they're. I can't do that. Why you tried them? Oh yeah. <laughs> I've tried the the one. They're like they're size of a quarter. They look like little mini chocolate chip cookies. What happened to you? Well, I mean, you're like I'm like I don't know any better. I'm like, geez, how how potent can these be? You know, so I like wolf down <laughs> three or four, and then. <laughs> <laughs> this was on vacation in um, Colorado, so technically I was not breaking the law. No, you were not. Yeah, damn right I wasn't. I'm dying to hear your experience on it, though. I don't know if we want to go there, do we? I mean, I've been there. I think we do. Are you willing to go there is the question. I mean, it was in Colorado. I wasn't breaking any laws. We can talk about it. Yeah. I think we are. Dad, <laughs> Dad, what you admitted last week on the show is far worse than doing edibles in Colorado. Yeah. Okay, but what's what's the truth and what's not? That's the question. You know. No one believes that like everyone thinks you actually did it, Dad, because you no. did. Oh, I didn't. I, I think now you saw the reaction and you're trying to do the thing of like, ah, was I telling the truth? No, We're doing I, content. You no. did it. No, that, that's exactly. I was doing content. It was you performance it. art. I did not do that. Greg, I'll tell a story if it makes you feel better. Yeah. When I first took the first edible I ever took was in New York. And at the time I was breaking the law. Okay. So now you can feel good about telling your story. And the guy told me, hey, just eat half of this. Mm. And so I ate half and I waited and I waited and I waited and I didn't feel anything. And he begged me just to eat half. And he did say on the front end, it might take a while. But I was impatient. Right. Because when you smoke marijuana, you get, you know, you get instant gratification. And waiting an hour or two for something to kick in was not something I was familiar with. Right. So I ate another half, which became a full cookie. And 60 minutes later, I don't remember anything. I woke up the next morning on the floor in my wife's uncle's apartment because Abby had to throw me into a cab with her and she took me home. And I was curled up in the fetal position and I don't remember a thing after wow. after the second half of that cookie. Wow. This was last Wednesday. So, with that being said, uh, feel free to share your story of you having four cookies in Colorado. Yeah, I wolfed them down. It was three or four. Uh, I didn't know three how. Three or four? Yeah, I You don't ask? Down. You don't well, say, hey, person I'm purchasing this from, What's what, what, how fast should I do these? The guy at the thing, and it was one of those official things where you're, you know, he they dress like pharmacists in there. And... Um, they s s sold me a vial of uh, edible cookies, and, and it was in Colorado, so it's 100% legal. And my wife and I are getting ready to go to dinner. We popped open the thing. She had a nibble of one, and uh, and I ate, I think, probably two or three, and uh, and it, it hit me by the I just time we love, got to that restaurant. I just love how terrified you are of this conversation. You keep throwing in there, like, it's perfectly legal what I, mean, I did. To be, I, fair, to be fair to Greg, this has not exactly been... You know, the most up and up thing to talk about for 60 years of his life. Right, exactly. It's a fairly recent phenomenon. We just go, oh, yeah, everything's fine now. No, and, and I don't, you know, we did that because it, it, we were vacationing in Colorado and I wanted Stop to stop giving qualifiers. <laughs> I you know, have to you know give a qualifier. Greg, Greg, more qualifiers. It feels better when you're doing it legally. It right. Does. I'm going to, I don't, I don't smoke anymore. I mean, I don't do that. I did in totally college. Lying, trying to make him feel better. I mean, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that. Getting away with it was much more fun. I mean, seriously. I, I had my day doing that, so. We used to get dime bags at a place in Hillside, Queens. It was called the Tie Door. Oh, <laughs> was it fantastic? You never saw the guy. You just saw his hand. <laughs> you would see his like hand. Like a first touch in a <laughs> marriage? Yeah, you would see. You would open up this little sliding door in Hillside, Queens. You would see his hand. He would see your hand. You'd never see each other. <laughs> He'd put weed in your hand. You would put money in his hand, and that was it. That was a transaction. It was great. Called the and tie door. Weed first, <laughs> then money. Money first. Oh, well, it was like you would do it at the same time, but occasionally. So you'd see both hands. 
Yes, correct. Once every six months, you hear stories of like some guy sticking his hand and then like you know getting getting arrested on the spot. On the, <laughs> the cuffs right on the wrist. That's all you see the wrist, and then. Shh, shh. I always wondered: Is today going to be the day? Because I went every day. Uh, and it wasn't far from my house, but is today the day that it's going to be a cop on the other side of that door? I did. I feared that every single day, but it didn't stop me from going out there every single day. Hop, skip, and a jump. <laughs> <laughs> is that fear worth it? Yes. <laughs> the fear is what made it. I mean, that's. I mean, Greg's right. Now you walk in, they're dressed like they're experts, right. pharmacists. Yeah. It make me a little nervous. I mean, more nervous than meeting a guy at a tie door, never seeing him, just exchanging things in our hands. That's right. I mean, this is not my preferred vice, so I don't know much about it, but I do know that sports gambling is more in my kind of realm, and I much prefer states in which it is legal than having to like get on some website and put in a credit card and yes. God knows how like if I'm going to get my money if I win money and I like compared to landing in a DraftKings state I do my best gambling when I land in a DraftKings state right. where I put in 10 bets the second I like the sure. the, we, the wheels hit the ground and my first thing is not to text <laughs> anyone that I'm okay and I've landed safely it's put bets in straight away I have like an 80% record of hitting bets when I'm on planes. Why? I mean, I, I don't know. It just it, makes it, you feel better. It's either the rush of getting there or the rush of, holy shit, I'm about to leave. I got to put in like my week 13 NFL bets before this plane takes off. Right. And you've got like 11 minutes before this plane takes off. And it's like, all right, uh, do I like the Jags or the Steelers? I'm taking the Jags. And like, <laughs> like the quickness and the rush makes me better at it. But I prefer, much prefer that experience, like being on an app, betting sure. on anything I want, than online you guys have talked about bookies and stuff well you want to laugh witty please i'm still meeting a guy and handing him money or he's handing me money yeah, we've established that it feels great no but i'm meeting a bookie <laughs> like it's it's fantastic i love it we meet in an alley i mean <laughs> literally in an yeah, alley i'm having a heater That's waiting funny. for him so it's all cash, no Zelle, no Venmo, just all cash. I have a limit, so if I reach a certain, I could go. Oh, a I love the I limit. Could, I could go a year without seeing same, the person. Same, right? And I will stop just short of the limit, and open up an account somewhere else. <laughs> 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 but you know your bookie; he's a friend, right? Or no? I don't want to say he's a friend, but uh, I know him. Okay. An acquaintance of convenience. Yes. How many b different bookies do you owe four hundred ninety nine dollars? <laughs> My limit's a bit higher. Oh, whoa! Oh, oh. nine hundred ninety nine dollars. To answer your question, several. There are several people throughout South Florida that I owe $999 to. <laughs> <laughs> They're just waiting for my next bet. Sounds so much worse than <laughs> app sports gambling. Yeah, or but even, it's a rush. Or even yeah. like, uh, you know, I, I didn't partake, but when we were in Los Angeles, we went in, into one of these storefronts that sells weed. <laughs> and I wa and it looked like a, it looked like a Sprint store. I can say Sprint because it doesn't doesn't exist anymore. But like you, you it, it's like walking into a cell phone store, yep. and they have everything on display, and it just seems very normal. The nicest employees too. Yeah, all these people. We almost got witty ones because there was. I was also walking in to that establishment with Witty, and um, I was trying to figure out certain things that we wanted to get for Chris Cody. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> just throw my name out there. I mean, again. <laughs> Yeah, be like your dad. It's legal. We are in a legal state. There you go. Just give legal. All the I was working. Oh wait, shit. <laughs> so we start getting different things, right? And Tahoe? then there's uh, Super Bowl, buddy. Uh, L.A. Um, so sorry. we walk in, and then there's a guy giving out free samples of these little cookies and Rice Krispie treats and stuff. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, witty. They're, they're, those are. Yeah, so go so ahead, they actually, I'm like, so grab one, witty. I'm like, get a Rice were. Krispie treat. And he's like, no, these have zero. And I was like, don't say that, dude. Like, give him the one that has the real stuff. Okay. Or, 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 or you're going to try and like placebo me into thinking that I was high as shit. Yeah. That's right. It would have worked. <laughs> it didn't work, though. It might have worked, honestly. It I'd worked. love to see you high. We tried. <laughs> we tried hard, yeah. <laughs> he just kept saying, not for me, Clive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would pay to see that. Chris Cody. <laughs> Were you guys laughing? <laughs> it's funnier when you're high when yeah. he says that, right? <laughs> we, <laughs> met up, we met up with Ricky William, and he gave yeah. us this like little box that had just everything we needed in it. Yeah, he gave us a did. lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Everything is funnier when you're high. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, what happened to you after eating three or four? Like, can you... Back to you. Yeah. Oh, uh, we went to a restaurant. 
and um, you know, spent three hundred bucks on appetizers. <laughs> and um, hell yeah. And I remember, I'm not a fast talker. If anything, I'm I'm a slow, deliberate talker who says a lot of ums and ahs. Right. My wife at that uh, restaurant accused me of speed talking, of, of talking faster than I ever had in my entire life, which I wasn't even conscious of. So, yeah, it hit me very, it hit me very hard. Right. Enjoyable, though. I have no idea what I ordered for my main course. Three or four, though, man. Yeah. Are you sure you didn't do cocaine? No, no, they were, <laughs> they were edible I've never cookies. had someone really high and be like, this, you shut up, dude. I know. <laughs> it, it, believe me, that was new to me, too. Because normally you're talking like a 1970s, uh, you know, rock DJ. Or is it possible that life had slowed down so much for your wife that by it, it seemed like, by, like you were you, you were right. talking normally, were. but to her you were talking at an incredibly fast rate of be. speed. That's possible. That's a possibility. Oh That's a good my point. god! Did the yeah. waiter walk up and you're like, I ate edibles because you're just like terrified? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it's legal here. I'm on vacation. <laughs> Believe me, I'm sure he sensed it. You know, working in that state and and seeing some somebody in that state. Uh, I'm sure he sent something. How much was the bill that night? Oh, gosh. I, I think uh, we ordered a nice bottle of wine, which always jacks it up. So I think it was like a $400 bill. I something. mean, you were hammered. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Four cookies and a yeah. bottle of wine. Oh, my gosh. Probably like Christ. seven Miller Lights. Right. <laughs> exactly. And that was at the restaurant. But seriously, no, it was uh, it was a nice time. Well, I love Colorado. <laughs> I really do. It's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Just the the whole the the scenery, you know, the vibe of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to the Red Rocks Amphitheater just to walk around because it's such a stunning uh, venue. It's a, it's a tourist attraction in and of itself. So. Red Rocks is my favorite venue, yeah. of all time. It's of a, all the places I've seen the dead, that's my that and Shoreline Amphitheater. Supposedly, yeah. it's one of the great venues. All the musicians rave about it, like the acoustics and the mm -hmm. the background and and the seating arrangement. It's it's just. Beautiful. I would love to see somebody perform there. I never have. Uh, Mike loves music. I'm, have you ever been to Red Rocks? I have not. I would highly suggest that you get out there at least once in your life. Yeah, I'm getting It's to worth it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Just waiting for the right show. Yeah. Uh, Greg has a back in my day today, which is fantastic. And we'll Tuesday. get to it. Oh, you're right. It yeah. is Tuesday. Uh, we'll get to it in a second. But um, you have been telling me here during the break that you feel... Speaking of bowls, the Super Bowl is, uh, we weren't really talking bowls, but cannabis. <laughs> um, it was my only transition. <laughs> it was a good one. <laughs> Smooth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Smooth. Yeah. Uh, but you were telling me you feel like this Super Bowl is going to be epic. I do. And I don't know whether I'm alone in this. I don't think this every year. Like, uh, to me, every other Super Bowl is like, eh, meh, M-E-H. This one, to me, you, you have... It's a historic quarterback matchup. First two black quarterbacks starting in the Super Bowl. Uh, youngest combined age of two starting quarterbacks. You know, the, these guys are on the vanguard of, of the new NFL. Uh, you have uh, Andy, the first uh, coach Andy Reid fired was Nick Sirianni, uh, who's now his adversary in the Super Bowl. That was when he first became the Kansas City coach, and Sirianni did not make the cut to stay. And then... Um, you know the the defenses uh, are, are interesting. They're not they're not great, but um, the the co you know the coaching matchup is is terrific because Sirianni's great, and and there's no sin. I, I'm happy that there's no Cinderella. There's you know? no fluke here. There's I think no I think fluke. before the season, if you ask most people who's gonna who's gonna make the Super Bowl, they would have told you. Philadelphia, Kansas City. I think I think yeah. that would be the majority pick because right. the a number, lot of people felt like Philly was very talented. Yeah, they're the number one seeds and deserve to be. Uh, and not to mention the, the the Kelsey brothers, the first brothers to play in the Super Bowl. That's pretty cool. Well, Mike is shaking me off real quick, saying, "No, the Chiefs, no, Mike." Or is it the you're saying that people expected Philadelphia to be here? They were they were they were one and done bounced by no. Tampa Bay last year. You had the Los Angeles Rams in that conference win. I'm yeah. just I'm just saying a lot of people said Philadelphia, if Jalen Hurts can can take the next step, right. and he did, their team's talented enough. They got like a lot San of Francisco. Buzz. They got yeah. a lot of preseason oh, yeah. buzz. Well, they're the best defense. Well, in they the got league. AJ Brown. Yeah. They made some moves, man. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. You're, I mean, you're probably right. Great running game. Kansas in, City, no one's surprised though, right? I will say, in terms of preseason odds, I'm looking at an article from ahead of the season on September second, and they were twenty five to one to win the Super Bowl. 
and those were the 13th best odds in the league. So this is still, like, the, the season that they've embarked on is a surprise. As the season has played out, it is not a surprise any longer right. that they are a Super Bowl contender. Right. But at the beginning of the season, this was not expected. Right, but I think I think when you look at this matchup, you're you're pretty safe that these are the two best teams in the league, right? I mean, I don't I I don't go Buffalo, I don't go Cincinnati, I don't go Dallas. I mean, the two teams that deserve to be here are here, and you can't always say that in a Super Bowl for me, anyway. Right, the Eagles, start to finish, have been the best team in the NFL. Right, they well, have they, been. They were what? They weren't they ten and zero? They mean, were at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was only they lost, you know. Three games at the end of the season when they weren't they weren't even really trying that hard. They had already clinched the one seed. Right. Life is like every time that they've had to play a meaningful game, they've not only won but mostly have won dominantly. Yeah, and and two of their losses were when Hertz was out with his shoulder injury. Me and Stu Gotts were talking about this yesterday. Can Philly go the entire season without playing a meaningful game and win the Super Bowl? I said this weeks ago on the show, my concern <laughs> for Philadelphia is that they will go weeks without playing a meaningful game. And that still holds true. Well, wait, what do what you about mean by last, meaningful game? They played week? in the NFC Championship last Yeah, week. I know, but I mean. <laughs> I, guess, I guess maybe not Josh meaning, Johnson. Maybe, Josh Johnson. Maybe not meaningful, hurt. but significant. Michael, they played Daniel Jones and Josh Johnson to get to a Super Bowl. I mean, I, I, I they blew both teams I think you need to pick a different out. word other than meaningful. It's okay. a divisional round in the right. NFC Championship. A competitive game? Impressive. There you go. <laughs> Impressive. Uh, it's significant? No, that, th- that they played in the NFC Championship. No, no, no. Like a. Yeah, that's what you're saying. You're saying impressive, game. a victory that you're impressed with. They had, right. They you mean competitive. They wrapped up the division early. Uh, Dallas had a chance throughout, but pretty much they had wrapped that thing up. Jalen Hurts took a couple of weeks off. Uh, they played two games. I'm not saying they weren't big games. They weren't. Mike is right. Those were big games. They're playoff games, but they weren't competitive games. And we know Kansas City is going to be competitive. So they haven't really been in a close game, it seems like, that with, with stakes attached to it. In quite some time. Yeah, but they were competitive games going into the game. Uh, Philadelphia, if You're unless, right. unless I'm wrong, Philadelphia was only favored over Dallas by two and a half points yeah. at home, which mm-hmm. isn't barely if if the home field advantage number. I mean, so. no, it, it, it's 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 totally fair, but it's been an easy road for the Eagles. I mean, when you have to face those two quarterbacks at but home, easy be easy because they make it easy, right? Like, well, easy because well, yes, they earned that right to have the easiest path. No, I understand that, but easy because it's also Daniel Jones and Josh Johnson. Like they got a break with Brock Purdy, right? Funny I, sentence. I think I know <laughs> they got a break that Purdy went down. Uh, I mean, I was, if, if you look at like the the margin of victory on their big wins this season, they beat Minnesota by seventeen. They beat Dallas by two scores. They beat Pittsburgh by two scores. Uh, they beat Tennessee by twenty five. They beat the Giants by twenty six. And then again in the playoffs by thirty one. They just hammered San Francisco, who I thought it like the quarterback didn't even matter. Like they have put together some massively significant victories this season. Where you go, this is a dominant team. Yeah, it was a stupid comment, but I said it nonetheless. I mean. It was. I happen to think Philadelphia is going to win the game. I do, and I'm not oh, certain. A lot of people do. Yeah. yeah, I'm not certain what we're doing with Jalen Hurts. Where if he beats Patrick Mahomes in a Super Bowl, we're not elevating him to, you know, the way we would Joe You're Burrow. You're the person that wasn't. I you, know. You so were what, standing in his way. What? 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 Changed? This is your opportunity to pivot off of him, and, and say, you know what? I was wrong about Jalen Hurts. Hmm. I'm curious if the, I mean your takes are saying that. I have but, two weeks though, but I, I need you to acknowledge. You were wrong about Jalen Hurts then. I'm curious if the NFL MVP. Jump on the bandwagon, Stu. Has the NFL Ooh. MVP voting happened yet? Yes. It's a regular season award. Okay. Okay. Because if it hadn't, uh, this Super Bowl would be for the MVP award, in, in my view. Whoever wins it wins the MVP. I, yeah, absolutely. If They're going to give it to Mahomes, I'm sure. But if Jalen Hurts outplays Mahomes and wins the Super Bowl, to me, he's the MVP for his dual threat. Unbelievable. What a season he's had. It would be Mahomes' third MVP? Second, I think. I'm not sure. Second, but Greg, I'd, I'd give a little pushback on that. Like, Obviously, it feels like there's a bit of LeBron fatigue when it comes to Patrick Mahomes. Like, We know he's the best player in the NFL. He's right. the best quarterback that we've seen in you know X amount of years. But like Jalen Hurts has been playing so well. He's developed his game passing so well. I think he's got like 15-some-odd games with... With a rushing touchdown, like he's an incredible dual sport or excuse me, dual threat athlete. Yep. Like, why is it not his turn to get an MVP? Did like even, we saw Lamar do it. Did he even play that well on Sunday? 
But it's no. not a Sunday award. He did not. It's not a he Sunday hasn't... award, though. I mean, he it's has... a re- you said it yourself. It's a regular season award. It doesn't matter what happened Sunday. It's about what happened when he was, what, 11-1 as a starter? No, Tony, what you're saying is fair. What you're saying is fair. But what Chris is also saying, like, if he plays like that against the Chiefs, they're going to lose. He no, can't I, play I hear like you. that. I'm talking about just regular season MVP, which is what we talked Jaylen about. Jalen Hurts. Like, I don't think that there was anybody more valuable to his team than him. 100%. For me, it's a two-man race between those two. I mean, uh, Mahomes is. Like, yeah, but it's, it's, it's the Patrick, fatigue of no, Patrick, no, Patrick how, Mahomes. Is well, incredible. Are you guys no, tired time, of Patrick not, Mahomes? He's in his mid 20s. Right. Guys, time out. First off, of I was on the verge of saying two MVPs, two Super Bowls in, the, in his first five seasons. If he pulls that off, like, yeah, it's going to be hard to dispute. It's the greatest start to a to a quarterbacking career. They let Tyreek Hill go, and yeah, that, I, that, I, that increases right. his value exactly. to the team. I he has manufactured Patrick Mahomes has the value in the Chiefs offense. But I understand that. But when you had we all knew Mahomes was going to be good this year and the Chiefs were going to be good. When people say about your team they're really talented, if the quarterback is good, they'll be a great team. If you're not certain he's good, and he was great. And they were a great team. Right. So you're making to me, that's that person, MVP. That doesn't no, mean he's that, most that, valuable. You, you laid out an argument for why he wouldn't be the most valuable player because they're saying how loaded that team is. Right. And he just has to be good to get him there. So he did his job. If Patrick Mahomes isn't on the Kansas City Chiefs, We've seen what that team looks like over. Chad Henney had a ninety-eight yard Chad drive Henney, for a yeah. touchdown. I don't yeah. know. Why. This is no, semantics. All these guys we're talking about, They're Joe great. Burrow. They're all in this conversation. But like I, I, Tony's not wrong for saying that Jalen Hurts could have won MVP this year. No, he's, no, he's, he's not he's, wrong. He's one of the people to consider, but it's, it's just too many. I, I think people. But Mah- get Mike too is saying Mahomes with, is great. Like people it, get too caught up in trying to find somebody different, and and you you were doing it with Burrow. Everybody just doesn't want to acknowledge the realities that. Patrick Mahomes is the top of the line when it comes to that position in the NFL right now. Right. He is. That you team take, is not in the Super he's Bowl. He's the current him. day Peyton Manning, right? Like we can give him the MVP every single right. year. It's just yeah, not going to happen. Haven't yet. You haven't. He's well, got one. Like we can't we can't be bored. We can't be <laughs> right, bored by stopped, this already. We stopped giving them the Jordan after like six. Right. I know. Then but then Patrick we would give out the Barkley and Malone would get one. It was who stupid. Would, who would be the mo- the first overall pick if we redrafted all the Patrick teams right now? Mahomes. Right. That, Mahomes. That's pretty and valuable. And, and, that's and it's not like he didn't have. He had by far the best statistical season of any quarterback in the league. Yeah. He was six touchdowns ahead of anybody else in touchdowns. He was 500 yards ahead of anybody else in passing yards. I'm not taking anything away from Jalen Hurts. Fan, fantastic player deserves to be on the medal stand. But come on, what Patrick Mahomes did with Tyreek Hill. We were talking about Tyreek Hill as MVP. Right. Tyreek Hill had a spectacular season for the Miami Dolphins. He's gone. Dude, I know it's a regular season, but dude on a high ankle sprain just willed his team to the Super Bowl. He's head and shoulders the best, and we just don't want to give him an MVP because, yeah, we we all know you're the best. It's more fun to give it to Jalen Hurts. Let's give it, it to is. a new guy. It's just dumb. Give it to the best player. Yeah, Mahomes, Give it to the Mahomes, most valuable one. Mahomes will win and should win, I think. I, it, it's not going to be an outrage if Mahomes wins the MVP. I mean, you know, but and, I think and Mike Hertz, is saying it should be an outrage if Hertz wins it. No, I'm not outraged. It's just it's a, it's an it's an acknowledgement of the the hipster votes. We just want something new and exciting, and it's just it's okay for Jalen Hurts, just like it's okay for Joe Burrow to not be as valuable to their team as Patrick Mahomes is, and still be val- valuable. We're having him. The honor is to be in the discussion, but if you're voting for Jalen Hurts over Patrick Mahomes. You're kind of just hating on Patrick Mahomes or and the notion of giving it on a, to a legacy candidate. You're just bored. Yeah. I mean, that, that, and you want to do something hipstery and fun. It's not just people you're... get bored, guys. But how? He's only got one. I know. He only has I'm, one. I'm just telling you, people get bored. People want to see something new dumb. and something different. Well, it is dumb. dumb. And another point, too, that I actually found really interesting this year is the fact that you take out Tyreek Hill, probably the best offensive weapon we have in football right now, and he got better as a quarterback, right? He wasn't relying on throwing 65 yard bombs to Tyreek Hill every play. They were playing two high safeties. He had to spread the wealth around. MVS, who was kind of a whatever, has come online. Like Juju, who we thought was toast, is somewhat decent. Like Kelsey's still incredible, but they did it through so many different weapons. It wasn't just Tyreek, let's go throw a 65 yard bomb. Right. But that speaks to Mahomes' greatness, though. Right. If he can adapt to losing his number one weapon. And be better. Yeah. And and the other thing I would I would say is the, the reason Hertz is an MVP candidate is the same reason why a few years ago Lamar Jackson won the MVP is because it's a dual threat. 
And if you're a dual threat to that degree, as good as Hertz is running the ball as a threat, that's huge. And and that's where, even though Mahomes had a great statistical season passing, when you combine Hertz's passing and running, mm-hmm. pretty even impact. It's, it's not. It's not. Jalen Hurts had 22 passing touchdowns and 13 rushing touchdowns. Mahomes had 41 passing and four rushing. So he has 10 more touchdowns. Okay. Greg, if you put Jalen Hurts. Under, understanding that Hurts got injured in a couple games. Right. Like, he, he, right. he didn't play the full season. We agree Mahomes on the Eagles. They still made the Super Bowl. You put Jalen Hurts on the yeah, Kansas City yeah. Chiefs. Are they making the Super Bowl? Like, Jalen uh, Patrick argument, Mahomes yeah. is one of those guys you put on any team, they instantly become a Super Bowl contender. I don't right. think you could say that about Jalen Imagine Jaylen what Hurt. Andy Reid could do with Jalen Hurts, though. Right? Like, he's the, the wizard of offense. Imagine what he had... In somebody like that, but I mean, how, 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 how much what he's doing with Patrick Mahomes? No, well, I get that, but to Stu's point of if you put Jalen Hurts on the Chiefs, will they still make the Super Bowl? But also, I think so. You, you can't really create more ideal conditions for a quarterback than the Eagles' offensive line: AJ Brown, Devonta Smith, and Miles Sanders in the backfield, and Kenneth Gainwell as your backup. Dennis like, Goddard. That is that is an, that is a loaded offense, and and you also have the best defense in football, meaning. Jalen Hurts doesn't go into a game thinking, geez, I may need to score 34 points today. He just doesn't because his defense play- is so outs- good. And all that being said, still an outstanding player. Incredibly decisive, really athletic, great running the ball, made vast improvements throwing the ball, still has room to grow as a thrower of the football, just not as good as Patrick Mahomes. Agreed. That's that- I agree. I don't think anybody's disputing that, though. No, well, no, but no, there, I mean, there you, are going to be voters that dispute that. People and, are by mounting an MVP case for anyone other than Mahomes. Well, and, and, and by but the way, we have to, right? It what? can't just no. be Mahomes and nobody else. I don't think so. This year, like, there's it, people that need to have their flowers for well, having an incredible are, season. Yeah, we're giving them flowers by talking about them. Like, who's your MVP? Second but, place but flowers. It's very. Right. Yeah. He's in the conversation, Tony. I'm just yeah, saying right, there needs to be a conversation. That's, that's all. That's the honor. Well, but you're, it's he's head and shoulders. Right. Michael Jordan only won the MVP five times. Okay, he should have won it every year, though. Right. To my point. Yeah, I mean, but they started giving them away to Barkley for Bark and, and Carl Malone. Carl started, Malone. Yeah, people started getting bored. How are we there already with Patrick? How well, many does LeBron that's, have? That's a fair point by Mike. He's only won one. We started doing that with Michael after five. I mean, look what happened to LeBron. It was Derrick Rose. Four, yeah, I think. but Derrick yeah, Rose four. had a, a good season, but LeBron was obviously the best player yeah, that was the, in the that sport. Was, that was the. Decision and they gave and they gave it to somebody else because they were bored they because wanted, they didn't like the, the the narrative or whatever yeah, it was like it happens. You no, know, I I understand that it happens. And but it's Mike's just, saying, can I'm we give Mahomes a notion, couple? Right. Like, <laughs> what was what, let's give him let's give him some here. What was Mahomes' fair, stats the year that Lamar won MVP? Because I feel like if if he was as excellent as he was if this it isn't year, isn't a baseball World Series champion. I don't know. <laughs> mm, <laughs> That's my wheelhouse. <laughs> It was super impressive. I'm still shocked by it. Uh, Mahomes How'd had you a, do that? Mahomes had a relative down year to what he's been over the course of his career in 2019, which is when Lamar won MVP. If you look at his touchdown figures, he's normally been high 30s. At one point, he had 50 in his first season as a starter. But he had 26 touchdowns and five interceptions the year that Lamar won MVP. So he had a, a down year relative to who he's been uh, in that 2019 season. Greg, if he wins two MVPs, two Super Bowls, first five years, that's it's probably the greatest start. And yeah, and and I mean, Tom Tom Brady won three Super Bowls in first four years. Five, first well, five. Nobody, first nobody, four. nobody nobody's going to be Brady, but apart from Brady, well, just one MVP is for his career. I think Brady. Really? He's yeah, I one MVP. So. I think so. Yeah, but he's always been a quarterback that doesn't have the the most impressive passing totals. Right. He's won three MVPs: oh. 07, 10, and seventeen. Is that a fine? That's, I mean, that's, that's still, still, I mean, you're, that's you're still incredibly low. Right? Yeah, that's but shocking. To the Mahomes point, it's still three. Like, Mahomes is that dude now, best guy at the position, and on top of that, the stat, the stats back it up. Right. And, Whereas and, you could always say that about Brady. You could always been a Brady guy over Peyton Manning, but Peyton Manning would have the stats over him. Aaron Rodgers would have the stats over him. Brady competed in the elite generation of quarterbacks. And and if, if Kansas City wins... The Super Bowl. What what feathers Mahomes' legacy for me is that he would have won that second Super Bowl playing with an injury that during the regular season might have kept him out for four or five games. Easy. Hmm. I feel like everybody was on Manning over Brady until he like just compiled so many Super Bowls that it's like, all right, we have to say him now. Right. I mean, 
Like everybody, Brady, everybody Brady, had a Brady had a Hall of Fame career after Manning broke down. Right. I, like the eye they, test. They were was competitive o- for ten years. And two then, of them. <laughs> honestly, yeah. The eye test was always Peyton. Like you're yeah. just going off I, of I was, looking at their and, their and even and and it was. I was going to make this point. Like aesthetically, I loved watching Peyton Manning play football. I never. And maybe it's because he was in my division. Maybe people outside of the AFC East can can confirm. But I don't think like Tom Brady elicited like, oh man, I can't wait to watch Tom Brady on. That's because you're a hater. No, I, I, yeah. No, but when he he loves a guy, like pointing, figuring things out at the line of scrimmage, like he seems smarter than anyone else. It's the same thing I say about Joe Burrow now. It's why I get the Brady comps because Brady in his generation, which was the most stacked for quarterbacking. He never had the most elite physical trait out of any of the quarterbacks he was playing against. He would have taken Breeze's accuracy. You would have taken Aaron Rodgers' arm. You would have taken, heck, even mentally, I think most people would have projected that onto Peyton over Tom Brady. But Tom Brady was just really good at everything. And on top of that, the longevity and the on-field success when he won with Tampa, I think even dating back to when he had that comeback in the Super Bowl against the MVP that year and Matt Ryan, it just became undeniable yeah. at that point. People realized how ridiculous they were sounding. While Peyton Manning, I know he won a second one with his neck fused together. He was awful. In looking, Super Bowl. looking like a shell. <laughs> terrible. He's, he's the retired. worst quarterback to ever win a Super Bowl. Yeah. I, worse I, than I Dilfer. Yes. Like, seriously. Yes. Yeah. That agree. Manning was worse than Dilfer. I would agree. Yeah. It just became undeniable. People started... His success was so undeniable that people became self-aware as sports fans that they knew saying any other quarterback as the best ever would make you sound like an idiot. But also, everyone, or I don't want to say everyone, I was. I was sick of him. I was sick of him in 2010, and then he's had two Hall of Fame careers <laughs> We're since. Dolphins fans, though. I know. So yeah. I, I, I get it, but I mean, I, I also, I just don't think I he beat had, him once in the playoffs. Like, Mahomes, it felt great. Mahomes, Mahomes for me, is a, is a quarterback of such joy. Like, I love every Sunday. If you were a Chargers fan, you'd feel differently. You think so? I think so. I mean, I think we're emotional about Brady with Dolphins. I don't know. I mean, maybe. I think most people hate Tom Brady like they hate the Yankees. Like... But, I, but like, everybody uh, respects him. No, yeah, I think right. they hated the Patriots like they Super hated Bowls. the Yankees. I do. I think they hated Belichick, okay. Brady. I don't I, think they. I, I don't. I just. Don't and th- I think people have grown to like Brady a little bit. But but my question is, do you think we'll ever get there with Mahomes? Like, will Mahomes ever be so dominant that we get sick of him? Because uh, I, yes, you think so? Yeah, I think we get tired of all these so guys. So damn fun though. Like we I, got tired of Jordan, man. People got tired of Jordan. They that's did. True. We started to like Brady when he got hammered and threw the trophy on the boat. That was that two was the years moment. Ago. I'm yeah. t- but that's when people flipped <laughs> on. When, like when I'm not he, tired of it. Belichick. There was just again. Yeah, you just couldn't. You couldn't resist. There was it. like a levity when he won without Belichick. Right. I feel like what people don't like is Belichick being like the dark overlord of the Patriots' offense, where it's just like you have to be miserable to yeah, win. Right, exactly. But people did get bored with Brady's success, and they held that against him. What I'm questioning is why are we already there with Patrick Mahomes? I. He's it still seems so like this he's played forever, feels, though. That's this why. This still feels new to me, though. No, but it's, it's five fifth, straight. He's always there. The right? I feel like he's in his, like, 12th year. <laughs> I mean, I do. He's 27. Like, let's think about that for a second. The longevity of quarterbacks, like, he's 27 years old. He could play more 15 years more this. years. Right. Maybe more. Yeah, yeah, maybe more. I'm saying at a minimum. A minimum of 10 more years. We get 10 more years of Mahomes, Allen, and Burrow. Like, yeah. at Joe the Bur- height of their powers. <laughs> Joe Burrow is 26. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes is 27. Jesus. Joe Burrow's going to get so much money. <laughs> Ridiculous. They're going to lose T. Higgins for sure. He he would be most teams' number one wide receiver, right? Yeah, most teams. Can I have one of those quarterbacks just once? <laughs> that was, so I said, like, we we as if I'm a Chiefs fan. But I, at the same I time, said, I said, we thought, beat the Patriots. <laughs> right. I mean, we as I if I... I think I said I. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, man, it would be great. How great is it to be a Chiefs fan? Oh. It's, you basically have like an auto berth into the AFC Championship game. I mean, you had one of those quarterbacks, though. No, I didn't. I mean, you weren't there I, for no, it. You I weren't didn't. alive for it. So in, in, from my perspective, I didn't have it then. Right. I guess that's fair. Wow. I've never had one, though. Yeah. I mean, I, I certainly Before feel much I was more born, for you than while I I've been alive. Yeah. <laughs> I, Sanchez I, got you to two AFC Championship games, too. I don't want to hear that. Don't, don't you dare do that. Come on. Come on, Stu. It's Mark Sanchez. The Sanchez. Who is, I mean, I guess Namath. I was like, who's your best quarterback? Namath. Yeah. For one year, Namath. For one year, probably. No, for, for one, one year, maybe Brett Favre. I mean. No. <laughs> I'm serious. 
I'm telling you, that eight and two start with Brett Favre was the greatest feeling <laughs> I've ever had as a Jet fan. <laughs> it was amazing. I feel the same way about this to the start of this season for the Dolphins. <laughs> oh, yeah. that eight and three. I have never been happier as a yeah. football fan yeah. than yeah. like oh. top five passing leaders for the New York Jets all time. I have the list in front of me. So you got you want to guess who number five is? Um I can tell you I, who's on there. Do I have to do it in order, or can I just tell you who I think? Well, the number five, five is Vinny Testaverde. Damn okay. right. Two AFC championship appearances. For well, Vinny. one in '97. They had a lead against the Broncos at halftime. My friend uh, purchased Super Bowl tickets at halftime of that game and jinxed it. Yeah. <laughs> who's number four? Ken O'Brien. No, he's number two. Chad Pennington's number four. Richard Todd. Richard Todd is number three. Yeah. Number one should be easy. Well, John Amith, no? Overrated. He really is. I mean, he's terrible. He's te- you know who else is terrible? <laughs> Terry Bradshaw. He's, wow. in the, he's in the Hall of Fame because of four Super Bowl wins, and you can't discount that, obviously. But if you look at Terry Bradshaw's career stats, right. TD interception ratio and all the rest, Bad. not great. Average? I'm, I'm not going to say average, but a little bit of a compiler. Uh, put it on the poll. Was Terry Bradshaw terrible? I say that without his career stats in front of me. I don't think I'm wrong. But also, I mean, it's completely. And also, it, put was Joe Namath terrible? It's a because I'm with your dad. Different sport. Bradshaw, his stats were not that. What good. What was his ratio for his career? Touchdowns, uh, interceptions. Two hundred and twelve touchdowns, two hundred and ten interceptions. Ah, yeah, I mean, see there. Oh, but also, that's a lot of interceptions. But also, like his first two seasons, his rookie year, six touchdowns, twenty four interceptions. Yikes. Imagine if a rookie did that now. I mean, didn't Peyton, 30, Peyton 30, did that? 30, didn't he? Look, at, Peyton, look okay. at Peyton's rookie no, year. No, hang on. Nineteen ninety season started eight games, went three and five, completed thirty eight percent of his passes, fourteen hundred and ten yards, sixteen touchdowns, twenty four interceptions. <laughs> like that. That quarterback is in the XFL the next year now. That quarterback is not allowed to start a second game. Bradshaw, I, almost to, I almost want to go through his game logs. Bradshaw's last two Super Bowl wins came in seasons where he combined for 45 interceptions in 78 yeah. and 79. Yeah, 20 and 25. Yeah, but he did, he did have more touchdowns than interceptions that's, in those seasons. That's when they passed a lot less. <laughs> and and yeah, also, right. not to slam Bradshaw, his career completion percentage was 519 this is not an extraordinary quarterback. This is a quarterback who had Franco Harris and, and the greatest defense of his era. So By the way, he, did, he did that with maybe, with a, certainly a top five wide receiver duo of all time. Yes. Say it. He Swan was Trent Dilfer. Stallworth. Say it. He was Trent wow. Dilfer. Wow. Uh, you know, Lynn Swan and Stallworth. You're right about that. I yep. just found this uh, game line from a Terry Bradshaw game in his rookie season against the Packers. They lost 20 to 12. He went three of 20 oh. for 110 yards. A touchdown and four interceptions. Wait, <laughs> and the Steelers three won by thirty. For yes, that's actually pretty yards. impressive. The, <laughs> on a, yards on a, per ten, per, per, per completion. Yeah. completion, yeah. completion yeah. It. <laughs> it's crazy. He's in the Hall of Fame. Let's boot him out. See you, Gary.